I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. Tell me a little bit more about hanging out with Arnold because he's such an icon now and he's, you know, he's one of the world's biggest movie stars ever, but you knew him before all that. So uh, I heard it. Well, know, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, re I'll, I'll relay one story I remember vividly. I don't know if this will get me in trouble or not um, <laughs> for telling it, but, you know, here goes. Um, <laughs> on that trip to Vancouver for the Mr. North America, uh, Arnold and I, had been at a party the night before and we were flying out on the Sunday morning back to Los Angeles okay. from Vancouver. And I don't know why, but Arnold had my airplane ticket. He was wearing a blazer, a Navy blazer for the flight. And he had my airplane ticket, my return ticket um, um, in his breast pocket. And um, we were seatmates and we flew from Vancouver to um, in those days, he had to stop off in San Francisco and change planes and carry on the rest of the way okay. for the last leg. And um, somehow Arnold and I got separated in the airport and he had my return ticket for the last leg in his pocket. Okay. And I couldn't get on the plane. I didn't, I, I had nothing. I had, I didn't have a, even a credit card in those days, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. 21 years old. Um, I had a couple of quarters in my pocket and um, Arnold takes off on the plane without me with my ticket. Oh, and I have no way of getting back home to Los Angeles. Oh, and, and, and I had parked my car in front of his house um, a couple of days before that. And we drove together to the airport to LAX. And um, so I needed to get to his place and get to my car and get home and then report to work the yeah. next day at Weeder. And um um, you know, so I'm wait. I said, Oh God, so Arnold's got my plane ticket. I went to the, it was PSA airlines. It used to exist in those days. And I went up to the desk and I said, look, you know, my friend Arnold, he, they didn't have any idea who Arnold was. And right. I said, you've got my ticket. I have no way of getting back. Is there, you know, is, I don't know. I was trying to find a way to get onto a plane. And of course I had no cash and, uh, Arnold, um, um, he, his routine in those days was he would go to the Venice beach on Sunday afternoons. Okay. And sort of suntan and hang out with the guys and gossip and just sort of be, you know, just the guys getting together on the beach. It was a, a big deal and part of bodybuilding culture at that time. And so Arnold went from landing at the airport to LX straight to the beach. He never went home. And okay. I'm calling his house. I, I, I got my one quarter and I'm calling his house. <laughs> and I keep getting his mother. His mother was visiting from Austria. She didn't speak any English. And I didn't speak any German. And I'm trying to communicate with her. Where's Arnold? Where's Arnold? And I'd met her actually a few days before. And I don't know if she knew who I was, but I was trying to acquaint her. You know, yeah. I don't know if you remember me kind of thing. But, um, you know, so that didn't go very far. And then I figured out he must have gone to the beach. And, and there was this course. This is before cell phones. Right. right. Um, way before, you know, and, um, you know, it was pay phones in those days. Right. So I'm hanging out in the San Francisco airport for hours on end. I'm being harassed by Hari Krishnas and, you know, just, you know, the whole thing. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And I finally, uh, about six o'clock that evening, Arnold comes home from the beach and I get him at home. And um, he said, where are you? What's, uh, you know, like, it's my fault. He started yelling at me, like, I, where was I, you know? I said, you've got my ticket, you know, and uh, oh, oh, so I, I said, is there any way you can get to the airport or call the air airline and get wire another ticket to, you know, get me on the next plane? So he takes care of that. And I said, also, can you pick me up? Because um, I didn't even have fare for the taxi to his place yeah. in Santa Monica then. And so he picks me up in his incredible car. He used to drive these big 6.9 liter engine Mercedes. It was a silver tank of a car. Yeah. Uh, he used to keep it immaculate. And um, Arnold picked me up. It's like 8.30 at night. It's dark out. Um, and um, he, he's got a friend with him. Bernd Zimmerman was his name. It was a guy who ran a chain of studios, health studios in Austria and Germany. That was a karate guy. Mm -hmm. And um, really nice guy. He looked like George Papard, the actor. Okay. And he was in the A-team. And uh, so 
Arnold was driving. Uh, um, Barrett was in the front right passenger seat. I'm sitting directly behind Arnold. And we're starting to drive uh, towards Marina Del Rey. And running along the northern boundary of LAX is an east-west road. I forget what the name of the road is that leads you into Marina Del Rey. And we're taking this road. It's a really dark. There's no other traffic around us. Dead quiet. Um, and suddenly Arnold swerves the car over to the side of the road and he says something in German to Bernd, and they have this sort of agreement or something. And suddenly the car pulls over and Arnold opens his driver's side door. And I see that he's pulled into view a 357 Magnum pistol. Um, you know, I go, my God, what the hell is, I thought they're going to shoot me or something. <laughs> and, and Arnold stands up and he puts his gun out into the night sky and shoots off four rounds into the sky, like directly above, like right by the airport. He wasn't trying to hit an airplane. Let me be clear on that. <laughs> he, was, he was just, he, I think he had just bought this new gun and he was like a kid. He really wanted to let it go. <laughs> and, and so he fires the gun and I see these giants, like a cannon going off, these giant sparks shooting up into the night sky. And I'm thinking, my God, and Barrett's laughing and he's, Arnold's laughing. And suddenly he gets in and puts the, that brings the hides the gun under his seat and zooms off uh, like a getaway and and uh, we go home and that was the end of that night. You know? I thought, I'll, and I've told that story to friends and no one's ever believed me and I don't I hope Arnold doesn't sue me for that but it's the God's truth that's what I witnessed it with my own eyes. Oh, that's crazy! <laughs> but that's the kind of guy he was. He was a prankster. He liked to have a good time. Right, he had to be so much fun to hang out with, and he spent the whole yeah. week with him in that hotel room. That'd be crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was great. 